amid persistent challenges in Nigeria's uh, power sector. The transmission company of Nigeria, TCN, has restored power across seven northern states. This development brings a glimmer of hope to millions who have endured weeks of erratic power supply, which has disrupted daily lives and strained businesses. However, this restoration raises broader questions about the sustainability of electricity supply, its impact on economic growth, and how best to address the recurring issues in Nigerians' power infrastructure. On Nigeria Today, these questions will form the crux of our discussion. Restoration of power in seven northern states as we venture to understand what it will take to achieve a reliable, efficient, and sustainable electricity supply nationwide. I am Ikeria Clinton. Thanks for joining us. Now joining us uh, for the conversation here in the studio, uh, we have Joshua Ojito. He's an uh, NTU's uh, PA correspondent. You're welcome to Nigeria today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Also uh, joining us via Zoom is uh, Bode Fadipe. He's a CEO, Sage Consulting and Communications, and also former general manager, corporate communications, legal, uh, legal practitioner, and uh, he's also a PA expert. You're welcome to Nigeria today. Uh, can you hear me? Thank you for having me. Good evening, viewers. Okay, I'll, I'll start with you, uh, uh, Joshua. Can you give us uh, an overview of the power challenges faced by these uh, seven northern states? Thank you very much. Mm. The power challenge is not only for the seven northern states, mm -hmm. but 17 northern states. Uh, exception of Kwara, Niger, if not the entire northern state, we are out of electricity supply from the national grid for about 10 to 11 days until power was restored to serving state yesterday. This, is, this was what happened. There were two major lines that transmit bulk electricity to the northern parts of the country. You know, Nigerian power sector, we generate mostly from the hydro and thermal, that is gas. In fact, about 80% of our generation comes from gas, which are mostly in the southern part of the country, yeah. while hydro mostly in Niger State. Yeah. So the two major lines that supply electricity, the bulk electricity to the north, one is the Shiroro Kaduna Mando line which is a 330 kV double circuit line. By this, it means that line can be able to transmit even more than 400 megawatts of electricity to the northern parts of the country, especially Kaduna, Kano, Sokoto, and in fact, even Niger Republic. Then there is another line again coming from Owaji up here, that is Ugwaji, that is in Enugu State, is also another 330 kV double circuit line that also transmits bulk power from some of these generation plants in the southern part of the country, especially, mostly the NIPP power plants, and transmit it through Lafia, Jos, Gombe, and to other parts of the northern states. The first, what happened was the Shiroro Kaduna line about four towers were vandalized by vandals. So TCN resorted to now route electricity to the northern part through the Ugwaji appear line. That is through Inugu Makudi line. Yeah. That line again snapped. That was almost 10 days now that the line snapped, disrupting supply again. And that was how the entire northern state was in blackout for 11 days. The challenge, though that of Shiroro Kaduna, has to do with the insecurity in the area due to activities of bandits. But the one in Ugwaji appear, the challenge has to do with the location, which is a thick forest. And therefore, it took Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, its engineers, about five or four days, even to locate where the fault was, until it was finally discovered that it was a in, a, in, in an area called Uguamale, 
That, was in, that is in Benue State. And that was how they now mobilized with the support of security agencies to now bring, uh, start the repair work, which yesterday, lo and behold, about seven state were restored. So one line, that is line one mm -hmm. of that 330 KV Uguaji appeal line that was rectified yesterday and power was restored to about seven states. Out of the you, three lines? Yes, mm -hmm. out of the two lines. Mm -hmm. The Uguaji appeal has two lines. Yes, so it's one of the lines that was rest, the, uh, rectified yesterday and transmission and started yesterday, transmitting about 400 megawatts of electricity. But that of Shiroro Kaduna, security has to re-strategize before now they'll be deployed to that area for work to commence. And remember, that of Shiroro Kaduna, the towers were vandalized, mm -hmm. so it needs construction. But the one in Ugwaji appear that is in Benue State, that one has to do with the line which was ratified yesterday. So that was what happened. So for now, about seven states in the northern state, or seven states to be specific, are now enjoying electricity. Out of the 17? Out of the 17, mentioned. out of the 17 states. Okay. So while this is going on, of course, as we are talking, work is ongoing for, to restore the second line or to repair the second line in Ugwaji up here. Okay, uh, I will come back to you, uh, Joshua. Now, but, they, but they, we keep, uh, uh, you know, getting this information about uh, vandals and the sabotage and the rest of them, you know, when it comes to the power sector. C can you please tell us what is the missing link? What do you see that is fundamentally wrong in all of this? Bode, uh, please remove your earphone. We, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. 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 You, you, see, you see, sociologically speaking, the Nigerian environment is becoming very, very challenging. I mean, in the, it, it's not as if there was no crime in the 70s and in the 80s, but to go and vandalize transmission lines, even in the 90s, was not a common phenomenon. So today you have a situation where people have become so, I mean, have become so daring that in an attempt to, to fight the state or in an attempt to, to survive economically, they look for every means available to make sure that they are able to survive. There also, there is also the conspiracy theory, and this is subject to investigation and uh, confirmation that there are also internal sabotage. Now, that's 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 another side of it. Of course, uh, thank God for the, the the quality experience of Joshua Ujito, who who I I see, I mean I know as a, 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 an experienced journalist. The journalist for me is like a hunter. It's not everything that he sees in the in the in the in the, in the forest that is able to report. But there are so many things that we know that cannot be brought into the public space when it comes to the power sector. For instance, the other line that Joshua mentioned that is is passing through very thick vegetation. There are there are there are there are pieces of information in the public space that the quality of work that was done there was shoddy. Why that will be so is open to a lot of interpretations, I mean, investigations and interpretations. So for me, the Nigerian environment is becoming more and more challenging, such that the, 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 the government must rise to the occasion. I listened to the National Security Advisor this morning or yesterday, where he was where he itemized or he listed energy protection as one of the major uh, facilities that government must begin to pay extra attention to so because energy security is a major security can you really imagine the entire northern region that large swath of land being thrown out of supply for 10 days and perhaps still counting i mean look at what it, it has caused the economy of the entire north look at what it has done to the social life of the entire north look at what it has done to the health of the entire north 
So many things have been have been held captive as a result of what happened. And analysts are saying that the North was losing close to 1.5 trillion on a daily basis for 10 days. The North is a heavily commercialized area where a lot of trade, buying and selling takes place. For that period of time, nothing was going on so that that was significant enough as compared to what ought to be going on in the north. So for me, I think the country must begin to address a, a lot of social issues that are coming out of the economic situation that we have found ourselves today. Very much, uh, but now back to you, Joshua. You also wanted to tell us uh, what is going on as regards restoring uh, light in the rest of the other other states. Uh, you, you rightly mentioned that we had a 17 state that were cut off. Now seven states have been res restored. N now it's still remaining 10. Yes. Okay, and of course you also mentioned the other land issue. What have you seen that's going on to restore uh, power in these areas? For the Shiroro line, just mm. like I said, mm. due to security situation in the mm. area, that is one area that security have to re-strategize and deploy its personnel before TCN engineers can commence repair work. Mm. And this is coming from TCN. TCN said, as soon as security is guaranteed in that area, they will now commence repair work. But just like I said, the Shiroro Mando line or Shiroro Kaduna line, towers were vandalized, pulled down, destroyed. So, of course, this will now take time. But the one in Ugwaji appear, that is the one that it, 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 it is the line that slapped. So, fixing that or repairing that, I don't think should take us longer time. And just like the minister said and the TCN, the assurance was that this will be fixed by Sunday. But, but Joshua, something that uh, one would readily ask is that uh, destroying this, uh, these uh, uh, lines or destroying the infrastructure, power infrastructure, did not just happen in a day. Definitely must have been happening over time before it eventually came to this point yeah. where they were caught out. Was there no one that saw anything, that the communities did not see anything, or did they just sit down and watch people destroy power infrastructure? This is a serious concern. What do you think? And this is where collaboration now comes in. Mm -hmm. And this is where community engagement also comes mm -hmm. in. Mm -hmm. TCN has to sustain this advocacy with the locals mm -hmm. on the need for everyone to take, char take charge, mm -hmm. take responsibility of this infrastructure. For the fact that this infrastructure are government mm -hmm. or belongs to government, mm -hmm. who are the government? It is me and you that is the government. Mm -hmm. This power infrastructure are to provide electricity for everyone. It's not to provide electricity to government officials. It is for every Nigerian. Mm -hmm. And for the 10 or 11 days that the, na the, the northern part of the country was in blackout, mm -hmm. everybody felt the impact of this blackout. And they look at the economy loss. So I think TCN need to do more on the issue of community engagement mm -hmm. with the locals. Though TCN on their own part says that is what they have been doing, sustaining advocacy with the locals on the need for them to keep vigilance of this power infrastructure because these towers are not located in cities but they are located in rural areas and in some instances most of these towers are in hinterlands and that is why there is need for this vegetation control by the TCN which before now I think that is something that's supposed to be done annually for, for them to clear this vegetation along the power lines mm -hmm. so that some of these towers can be visible so that even if some of these vendors go around that place, the area will be so open that everyone can see. But you can imagine like in the case of Ogwaji appeal line mm -hmm. that it took TCN five days even to locate where the fault was. This is because it was, it, the place is a very thick forest. But you can imagine if there is vegetation control, perhaps they could have been able to identify that mm -hmm. easily. And also on the issue of vandalism that you're talking about or in the sh issue of saying it keep reoccurring, mm -hmm. like the issue that like the Chiroro Kaduna line. This this is not the first time that towers along that uh, line were pulled down. Mm -hmm. This is not the first time, but this time around, looking at the security implication and the threats to lives of the engineers, mm -hmm. that is why it's now taking longer time, and that is why national security advisor now has to step in for the for 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 for, for government to mobilize and re-strategize security so that. There should be proper deployment of security that line can be fixed. Beyond that, 
going forward, I think we also need to adopt technology in tracking some of these things. I, I'll, I'll come back to you on that, Joshua. Let, let's bring in Bode here. Uh, Bode, what more can be done to nip this problem in the bud? Because we keep uh, talking about the same issues. What can be done? Let me take off from where Joshua just stopped now in terms of technology. You see, I'm, 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 I'm embarrassed by the fact that by today's Nigeria, it took TCM four, four days to be able to locate where that fault was for them to be. I mean, I can understand that assessing the, the fault site will be difficult because you need a lot of heavy duty vehicles to clear the road and things like that. But like Joshua said, if that vegetation had been constantly cleared and that line had been constantly maintained, transmission always has a right of way that allow vehicles to travel on that track. But that is just one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is the technology. There, is, there, there, there are equipment in, in, in the power sector that can enable you to locate where a fault is. For instance, a cable that is laid underground, say in Abuja, that has some underground network, say maybe from NTA to maybe the minister's office, the minister of federal capital territory, and there is a cable traveling from your station to where the minister's office is, and there is a problem on that cable. There is a machine that can tell you the exact spot or bring you approximately close to the spot where that problem is so that you don't have to dig the entire cable length before you get to where the fault is. The same thing. And transmission is operating at a very high voltage level. So I will expect that by now, transmission will have equipment that can almost pinpoint, not that day one, day two, day three, day four, before they can locate where their fault is. That's number one. Number two, and it's very, very important that we stress this fact, for how long are we going to be policing the towers? The country does not have that resources. The, the, the security men don't have that time. They don't have, there are more serious issues there are issues of existential issues that they deal with than to go and see. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not by any means reducing the, 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 the degree of importance of energy security. But I'm saying that for you to now go and start locating military men in, in those thick forests is waste of human resources. Why can't we break our transmission network in such a way that we can regionalize it and then they can pass through the city, and then we can see that it can be more easy to police them. So even ask the communities to police the network as it is now, is even dangerous to their own lives. How many, I mean, how many communities can, uh, can withstand Boko Haram attack in such locations? Of course, they will run away, and they will have a field day to do whatever they want to do. So we must be, see, the, the problem I have in this country is that we are not a thinking country. We are not, a, by now, we should have seen this problem and we should have started devising solutions. But the problem I have with, with us in this country is that we thrive in chaos. It is only when things become chaotic. And who knows, maybe some people are benefiting from the chaos. That's why we wait until, until things become so bad before we now rise up to the occasion and we can spend $29 billion in restoring the network. I mean, what is the difference between 29 billion and the money and, 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 the, and, and, and the, 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 the amount that the former minister of power was accused to have, uh, to have taken away from, from the coffers? 33 billion, 29 billion. I mean, so we tried in chaos. So I, I'm not surprised that we are in this kind of situation. No, no, uh, 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 but I, I, will not, I, will, uh, I beg to disagree w with the comment you made that we are not a thinking country because uh, we have a. Uh, uh, people like you and uh, people like uh, uh, Ojito here. Of course, we are a thinking country. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, Ojito, Joshua, t talk to us uh, about uh, this uh, the situation uh, that uh, we are, we are faced. You, you talked about uh, technology and uh, what else have you, you know, uh, no noticed? Another thing, again, that we have to do to uh, prevent reoccurrence of this is the issue of decentralizing our grid, mm. just like uh, Mr. Bode said. Mm. For instance, 
we can't just say the entire northern country is relying on these two major lines mm. to transmit electricity, bulk mm. electricity. Mm. There are other uh, hydropower projects in the north that have not been completed, even thermal uh, plants. For instance, in Kaduna, there is this gas-powered plant, 215 megawatts gas-powered plant, that is still there for years, has not been completed. You can imagine if that power plant is completed. With this kind of challenge, the gas power plant in Kaduna can be able to generate and transmit electricity to Kaduna, Kano, and even Niger. We have the Gurara Dam, completed so many years, but the evacuation work is not done. That uh, power plant, that, that hydropower plant, uh, the Gurara, is generating 30, supposed to generate 30 megawatts of electricity. We have Dadin Kowa in Gombe, though that one is on the grid too. So by the time that we begin to have some of these mini, mini, mini dams across north, I think it will help so that the northern part of the country will not just rely on these two major lines that are transmitting electricity to the north. Mm. And also, just like the minister said, though it may be a long time, we have to now begin to think about solar. You have to begin to talk about renewables. Mm. By the time that states begin to now do their own, and thank God for the coming of the Electricity Act, which now empowers states to be able to do all these things. So northern parts of the country must not necessarily rely on some of these thermal plants that now generate electricity to the north. You need but alternative, alternative exactly. uh, source of uh, uh, power. Now, but but uh, give us your closing thought on this issue. Well, I, I, I think we must take a decision on what we want to do with the power sector. Ten years down the road, we are still repeating the same story and perhaps getting more complicated. Ten years down the road, I mean, we privatized. And like Joshua said, I am fully in support of the fact that the dams that are in the north, if we, if we, if we annex the resources, they are, I mean, Lines traveling from Enugu. Can you imagine lines traveling from Enugu? Look at the distance it will cover before it now carries electricity to the north. By now, if, if, if it was good in those days, it's no longer good today. We must begin to... You see, when I said we are not a thinking country, I, I need you to understand my context. We must begin to think ahead and begin to look for solutions. We, are not, we should not only think, we must implement we must not be people who we speak and not do things. That's the point I'm trying to make. So I thank, think take a decision. Thank you. Thank you very much, buddy. Yeah, I, I thank, God, thank God you corrected yourself there. We must think ahead. We are thinking, but you only mean we should think ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, uh, Bode Fadikbe. He's uh, uh, an electricity uh, expert and also CEO and uh, say consulting and communication. Thank you so much for your time and your contribution. And also uh, here in the studio, we had uh, Joshua Ojito, he's the NTA Power Correspondent. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, you so much. much. I appreciate it. <laughs> and thank you for being part of the program. Don't forget, Nigeria Today airs every weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTA News 24. You can also check out this episode and others on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. I am Ikeria Clinton. Thanks for watching. Thank you.